right, well, let's yeah. talk about some of the Republican cope here because <laughs> it has been something to watch. So uh, Molly Hemingway, uh, kind of in real time as these results were coming out, was asked on Fox News about why this happened in the state of Kansas. Let's take a listen to what she had to say. That Kansas referendum is very interesting. I do think that pro-lifers should understand that so much money was spent by hardcore abortion supporters to make sure that that amendment failed. It also was a pretty, um, there was a lot that was packaged there, and I think that usually pro-life initiatives do much better when they're incremental. And so it's a reminder also that as Roe v. Wade was overturned and abortion law and policy is returned to the states where people get to weigh in, there's a lot of work to be done for people who want to protect women and children from the scourge of abortion or people who want to make sure that it is enshrined in law. So, um, so there's a lot more to be done there, and we'll see a lot more in the years to come. So a couple things that are interesting there. First of all, remember when Roe was overturned, a lot of the Republican talking points were, this is great, leave it to the states, mm -hmm. voters can decide. And you're like, all right, voters decided. So how do you feel about it now? So that's number one. But the piece that's really so funny is the hand wringing about the big money that was spent. And there was a massive flood of money but it was on both sides yes. of this amendment. And in fact, I looked it up. The money was actually pretty even. Not to mention, I mean, Molly Hemingway of the fem the Federalists, I very much doubt she's ever sort of had these concerns about big money in politics That's not before. true. I'll give her some credit. She is very against like anti-big tech. Look, I respect Molly. She's a very pro-life person. But I think that a lot of these people, and actually she's being very honest here, which is the truth, is that the pro-life movement has been a legalistic movement. It has not been a popular movement. It has not been one targeted to voters really whatsoever. I'm talking also about this in my monologue. Ben Dominic himself, he was founder of the Federalist. He's also a pro-lifer. He's married to Megan McCain. He also admitted this. He's like, look, for the last 40 years, the pro-life project has been in the courts. So we talk about originalism, yeah. you know, all this. Stuff. We have not grappled but with that's... the actual popular movement at a ballot level in right. 40 years, which is a problem. Well, you know? I mean, because the yeah. strategy has been, there's been a record, not just on abortion, but on a lot of libertarian positions mm -hmm. in addition to social conservative positions an understanding that the public is not actually with us. Yeah. So we're gonna have to come up with a strategy that circumvents the public. So yeah, we'll use the courts to get our way. Very smart strategy. I mean, it worked for them. It yeah, took it a worked. long time, but it worked for them to ultimately get what they wanted. But the talking point about, oh, and we want it to go to the state, we want the voters to have their say, well, they don't really mean that because ultimately you're right. They have not banked on actually persuading voters, they've banked on using some of the anti-democratic institutions within our so-called democracy to get their way. So when you actually have a ballot initiative like this, doesn't go that way. Um, you have a GOP strategist in Kansas, let's put this next piece up on the screen, who says that this is a big deal. Um, quoting uh, in an interview uh, for the Wall Street Journal, there were no major contested Democratic primaries to drive turnout and the amendment still failed resoundingly. If Republicans think the issue of abortion is not on the minds of voters, tonight's results should put them on notice. So very, um, you know, very uh, dire assessment there, especially because, as we were pointing out, no major contested Democratic primaries. So this was all about driving turnout for this to vote against this one amendment. Um, we have some more cope from uh, anti-abortion activist Lila Rose. She says, pro-aborts poured millions into a massive disinformation campaign in Kansas. Pro-abort media pulled heavily for them. Another piece that came out of this, just to rebut what she's saying there, again, we already pointed out, the money was roughly equal on both sides. Um, the uh, anti-abortion side, the pro-life side, was actually caught somebody in that movement sending out texts that were lying to voters about which way to vote to be on the pro-choice side. Wow. So there was reporting on this. People were getting text messages, messages saying, vote yes to protect your right to choice. Uh, so if anything, the disinformation that was at least caught and recognized was very much on the side that Lila Rose is on. But my favorite here was Matt Schlapp. This is so funny. So go ahead and put this piece up. So he's responding to a an article in Insider that says a losing anti-abortion referendum in Kansas cranked up voter turnout by a staggering amount, flagging a massive new problem for Republicans. Kind of hard to deny <laughs> that analysis. But he says this is a false analysis. Kansas is a strongly pro-life state. Oh, really? That does not want to take timid states as VTB was. VTB, the acronym for the... Um, 
anti-choice side in this. Ironically, the pro-choice crowd in Kansas should have embraced BTB as it is the best case scenario for them. So his argument here is like, actually this failed because it didn't go far enough. That's what Kansas voters are rejecting. Yeah, I okay. think I, this is another <laughs> one which is really annoying me, which is that everybody is saying, well, it was worded weirdly. And I think that at the end of the day, because of the, actually, frankly, because of the amount of money and because of the amount of media attention, pretty much everybody knew what voting no yet and what voting yes meant. They, yes, I actually went and had and read the actual ballot initiative yeah. and it was long. It's like Kansas, freedom, blah, blah. It's a little bit hard to decipher, but I think most people were, had signs in their yards. It was like vote no, vote yes. And but they the understood weird, exactly what it meant. The weird wording yeah. was designed by the pro-life side. Right. I mean, this wasn't some like, you know, pro-choice, like they're trying to snow the voter. The, the wording was specifically created actually, I think to be confusing to voters on the pro-life side. So. They let, would be silly to complain about let that. Let me go ahead and read it for everybody. Yeah. It's because Kansas values both women and children. The Constitution of the state of Kansas does not require government funding of abortion, does not create or secure a right to abortion. To the extent permitted by the Constitution of the United States, the people through their elected state representatives, state senators may pass laws regarding abortion, including but not limited to laws that account for circumstances of pregnancy resulting from rape or incest or circumstances of necessity to save the life of the mother. So it's a little bit hard to be like, well, wait, what is exactly does that mean? And the reason why they framed it almost as like a pro-democratic side is because by voting no, you're actually voting to preserve a state Supreme Court decision, which right. is codified by the Supreme Court, which is really fascinating because you're like, well, it's democratic, but also the democracy voted to uphold a court decision, right. not to actually mm -hmm. uphold a law. Right. Very strange, um, which some people were pointing to. And it's also a little bit counterintuitive because Roe versus Wade originally was a Supreme Court decision, and then it was also overturned by our Supreme Court decision. To, to the extent that you're voting on anything, you're voting on how a court ruled, which is a little strange. It's, it's worth noting, too, yeah. that um, I think six out of seven of the justices that voted, this is per uh, Daniel Nishanian was mm -hmm. writing about this in Bolt, that voted in favor of this interpretation of the Kansas um, Constitution are on the ballot this fall. So that may be the next target is, all right, this whole popular thing, you know, going to the voters didn't work out. Let's try to get some different justices in there so we can get the court just to go our way the next time around. So that could be the next target. Um, the, other, the other thing that's interesting here is, um, you know, I think suburban women, they were very motivated to vote against Trump. So there was a seeming shift, you know, of white suburban women into the Democratic Party. Um, there seemed to be some shift away from the Democratic Party because of economic concerns and also because of some of the COVID lockdown and school policy and that sort of stuff. Those cultural issues, when the focus was on them, benefited the Republican Party more um, among this demographic group. And as you were pointing out before, this demographic in this ballot initiative has swung massively back to the Democratic side and was very energized to swing back, swing back to the Democratic side. So, um, you know, if the Republicans have a poorer than expected performance in the fall, I think that will be the group mm -hmm. that uh, would be the, you know, would be the surprise and would be the shift from where they were, let's say, when Glenn Youngkin was ultimately running for governor. Listen, again, I want to say, I think that this election is still broadly going to be about the economy. Every headwind is in the Democratic, you know, is going against the Democrats. Um, history is against them. Joe Biden's approval rating is at historic lows. 80% of the country says they're on the wrong track. So uh, Democrats shouldn't get too far ahead of themselves here. But when you combine these little indicators with the fact that the Republicans have nominated some very poor candidates in some very key states, I think you have a more complex midterm yes. picture than people would have anticipated a couple months yeah, ago. Yeah, that's just the best way to do it. Yeah. Don't be triumphalist on any sense of this. It's one vote, it is Kansas, it's not the rest of the country. You can extrapolate to a very limited extent and we're gonna find out in the fall. This is why I love elections, man. I love actually seeing how people vote. It just shuts up everybody, including myself and many other people. I'm just <laughs> like, hey, you know, it's a lot of fun in order to see how people actually behave. Yeah, you never know. Vote. You truly never know. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.